Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the brand new 2022 Netflix original animated feature film, Sea Beast. This is directed by Chris Williams. He wrote and directed this. He's the co-director of Moana. He directed Big Hero 6 and Bolt. Uh, Prep and Landing, I believe he did something of that. He He's, he's worked with Disney uh, for a long time. I love Big Hero 6, right? So when it was announced that Chris was going to be doing Netflix stuff, of course, I was nervous because he's, you know, an awesome Disney pr producer, director, writer. Um, I was nervous. But this movie was awesome. It's literally Pirates of the Caribbean meets How to Train Your Dragon. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? It's the same concept of uh, meeting a beastly creature. You're a human meeting a beastly creature. You're taught to... It's your sworn enemy, right? Bad. But then, like, certain circumstances happen, and then you have to work together, right? Kind of. So, there's, uh, Carl Urban, right? Is he the voice of, uh, the, the hunter? I can't remember, I can't remember their names for some reason. I can't remember the character names. So, this hunter is, uh, a sea beast hunter, and he is about to become captain of this vessel that he's been a part of for quite some time, right? The captain wants to retire he's you know the adopted son he's gonna take the helm literally and so there's a stowaway girl who's a firecracker absolutely wonderful character uh, whose parents you know were killed on a hunting trip um that for that the king and queen of this kingdom always demanded that you know there's hunters and they have to slay the sea beasts because there's a war hundred year war or something like that right so the Soon-to-be captain and the stowaway girl are inadvertently eaten by the biggest big red, right? The big sea beast, who they name Red. And so they wind up surviving by getting outside of Red. And so it's a matter of trying to get to an island. Well, they, they wind up on an island, but it's just filled with monsters, filled with beasts. And it's a matter of survival, adapt or die. Little girl figures out that the monsters aren't actually bad, that we're the bad guys, right? If we're the ones starting and constantly harassing these beasts, because technically it's the ocean, technically it's their land, it's now, it's not, it's, it's their home, it's not our home, it's their home. Much like how every time there's a shark attack, everybody freaks out, it's, it's their home. The ocean is where the sharks live. You don't live in the ocean, the sharks live in the ocean. What would you think if, if a shark just walked up into your house and then just, you know, you started to beat the hell out of the shark with something in your house? It's just things, right? So there was a lot of nature stuff to this, which I really enjoyed as well. As the story progresses, they work together, they go back to the kingdom, and then, you know, the girl shows that the beasts are not, you know, to be slain, that we can work together, that the king and queen just created lies for countless countless lies that cause so many deaths that it's time to change it's time to change adapt or die it's time to change so the kingdom revolts and you know no more slaying of beasts and then we're all going to work together and friends till the end this was just it was it was an it was two hours long it was very long but it didn't feel like it at all it was very emotional much like how how to train your dragon is but it was very adventurous much like how pirates of the caribbean is it's sailing the seas and going from island to island and meeting natives here and creatures there and what do you do to survive adapt or die do you keep going with the old ways that are clearly not relevant anymore or are you going to adapt change and move forward to progress to the future it's really cool i loved all the messaging behind it i thought chris did a fantastic job with the film there was one song it was like a pirate shanty it was like a sea shanty that they all sang but as i'm listening to it and i'm and i'm watching it and i just i keep going in my brain i'm saying how the hell is vampires the book series by justin somper not a tv series i don't understand it because you have all these incredible new pirate stuff right even though technically they're not referenced as pirates in this film they're referenced as hunters but they sail and it's like you know yeho and arg and stuff right but like why is vampires still not a licensed property amongst the streaming services because it has so much potential it takes 500 year takes place 500 years in the future uh post-apocalyptic and in the sense of uh there's vampires versus pirates on the seven seas mainly the seas of within you know the pacific and indian ocean but it's still an incredible franchise i need it to be i needed it to be a tv series for as long as i can as soon as i read the book back in what I didn't even know. 08? 2010? 
one of those years. Whenever I first read that book, I said, wow, this needs to be a TV series. And I still hold by it. And this film, Sea Beast, reminded me of how much I too still stand by it. Sea Beast was incredible. Vampires will be incredible whenever that happens. On to the next review. Wish you mahalo.